Hello, welcome to the latest You Are My Borough with myself, Dom Shaw and Scott Wilson from the Northern Echo. Scott Wilson, who was at the Riverside on Saturday to witness the first win of the season. How was it, Scott? It was much needed, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean, uh, you kind of figured a bit in the first 20, 25 minutes, I think, because Southampton were the better team early on. Um, they obviously had a good chance um, that Adams put wide before they scored. Then they got the goal and you thought, OK, this is now a test for Borough. This is this is a test now. Um, but in fairness to Borough, I thought that they handled that really well. I thought that they continued trying to do what Carrick obviously wants them to do in terms of playing, in terms of trying to be on the front foot, in terms of trying to get forward. Um, I thought Southampton didn't handle taking the lead very well. I thought this they, they, they didn't really seem to know what to do. They sat off, they dropped off. That obviously helped Borough then get a grip and, and get back into the game. Um, important, probably equalising right at the end of the first half. I think that was, you know, the classic good time to get a goal. Um, but then I thought, to be fair, pretty much all the way through the second half, if there was a team who looked like they were going to win it, it was Borough. Um, they got the penalty... And then again, you know, it wasn't a case of Borough hanging on in the last 10 minutes. If anything, it was a case of Borough spurning two or three really good chances to absolutely put the game to bed. So, um, you know, a massive result, but but also I thought a pretty good performance, to be fair. Before we carry on, just thanks to those who've, who left comments on the video that we did at the end of last week. There was plenty of there on YouTube, which is great. And just a reminder that if you do watch on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, then please press that button and subscribe. If you're listening on podcast, then then um, rate and leave a review as well, please, while you're at it. And just a shout, um, we have a flash sale on at the minute, the Echo, which is a pound for a month. And there's still a couple of days to take advantage of that, uh, that offer. Uh, so jump on that if you can. The details are all on the site. Um, how was Michael Carrick afterwards then, Scott? Because you spoke to him after the game and you've been to Rockcliffe as well today to speak yeah. to him. To be fair, um, the mood, which we've talked about at length, he's been upbeat and calm and positive even when they're getting beat. So, so I'd imagine that there wasn't a significant change in mood, was there? But could you sense an air of relief at all? Uh, I think you're right that he's been pretty level all the way through. I mean, to be perfectly honest, he's been fairly level all the way through his, his river, borough reign, isn't he? he? He's certainly not a manager that gets wildly high or wildly low. Um, I, I think there will have been a degree of relief. I mean, I thought it was very much a pains to say, look, we needed to get a win. Yes, you know, we've won the game. That's clearly very important. But um I don't, on at least a couple of occasions, he said, as I was watching that game in the second half, I was thinking, whatever happens a year, I can't ask any more from them. I can't have wanted any more from them. And even if the result hadn't gone, he was very much saying, what I saw tells me there's not a fundamental problem here. Um, and I think he's right in that, in terms of, you know, are the players playing for him? Are they buying into this? The answer has to be yes to that. Now, is the team how he wants it? Probably not. Are there still issues within the squad? Yes. Is he going to have, you know, big selection decisions to make between now and the end of the season? Yes. Does he need some of his new signings to start finding some form? Yes. None of that's gone away. But I think what it's proved is this is still a squad that's absolutely buying into what Carrick wants them to do. And there's enough within that squad to be doing much better than they have been doing so far this season. I think you'd have to come away from Saturday thinking both of those things. For, for all, for all, I completely see where Carrick's coming from when he talks, even though I wasn't there on Saturday. I, I completely see where he's coming from when he talks about, you know, even if we, even if the result hadn't gone the way on Saturday, I still see, you know, what I see gives me complete belief. But there's an art to winning, isn't there? And and. For a, for a group of young players, I do think it's important that a good performance like that results in a win. Because if not, it's just human nature, isn't it? That you come off 
having doubts if you put in what you think is a very good performance and you still don't manage to get over the line. So so even though I get what Carrick's saying there, it was hugely important and significant to, to see it through, wasn't it, and, and get all three points. Well, it would just have been such a crushing blow if Burr had let in a goal, say, in that final five minutes or in stoppage time, and you're coming away thinking they still haven't won a game. Because that's know, still a narrative, isn't it? Then? It would have been. It absolutely, it would have been our narrative. And I think, in fairness, it would have been with the fans as well because you know there's only so often you can listen to your manager telling you that everything's going to be all right and things are going to turn around you need to see it with your own eyes and you need to see that they can actually get over the line and get that result um because you're right you know that there is there's lots of examples of teams who play good football and up to a point do okay in games but then you're just knowing when it comes to closing out the deal there's a real problem there um so from you know from that point of view, yeah, absolutely massive to win. Pretty big, I think, to get off the foot of the table and just not be having that narrative rammed down your throat as well. Now you know, like I, I keep saying, it's one game, and even within that one game, had Southampton handled going ahead better, it might have been a much more difficult afternoon for Borough. So you know, it's it, it's not a case that everything in the garden's suddenly perfect now. Absolutely not. But it does feel an awful lot better than it did before going into that game. Just briefly, because I know we're not here to talk about Southampton, but are they the latest example of a team where it's only when you get into the championship season you realise that getting out of the trend of losing games and suddenly winning games doesn't just happen overnight and that hangover lingers? Because we saw it with Borough, didn't we, when that squad on paper you thought in the Gary Monk season you thought, oh, this is going to... This is going to storm the division. Stoke, two or three seasons. Every yeah. year there seems to be examples of teams on paper. And yet, once you start, once the season starts, you, you, the manager, whoever it is, seems to realise, well, actually, the rot seems to have set in here and it's not as easy as bring in some players and, and, and suddenly win games again. There, there seems to be deep-rooted problems there. And Russell Martin was saying that after the game, actually. You know, he he basically admitted when we put it to him that, yeah, absolutely, we didn't know what to do when we went ahead. We're not, this isn't a side that's used to winning football matches. Um, and he, you know, he used the word hangover on at least two or three occasions. Um, and, it, and it does feel like that, you know. I mean, already questions are being asked about his position and his job and is he going to survive there? Um, which I understand because, you know, the... the um, the belief there will be that they have to get promoted this season. But um, it seems very, very early for a, for a side that clearly has big issues that need to be overhauled and addressed. And the other thing with Southampton is, um, you know, I, I think we've all been a little bit swayed by, oh, they've kept Adam Armstrong, they've kept Shea Adams, they've got an awful lot up front. Yeah, but they have a poor midfield. I, I was surprised by how poor on paper and on the pitch their midfield was. There's been an awful lot taken out of that. Um, and then defensively, they, they just can't they can't shut teams out at the minute. So, um, you know, I, I think we've been a bit a bit wowed by the fact that they've got pre potentially Premier League class strikers, but the rest of the side isn't great. So, no, I'm, you know, having having probably at the start of the season had them down as, as real, real strong promotion candidates, I'd be, I'd be reining back on that a bit at the minute, I think. Yeah, I, I'm, it's, I'm already at the stage where I'm thinking I don't want to go look back at our predictions video from the start of the yeah. season. It already feels like we're going to be way off. Although I did tip Ipswich, so I'm happy to see you them. Did. Right now. You um, did. You did. You did. It is still. Did. I think I had Leicester to win it, and I still think they will. But yeah, Millwall and Coventry were my dark horses, and they're not. Yeah, they're, they're dark at the minute, aren't they? They're not dark horses. <laughs> they're just dark at the minute. They need to get themselves sorted. Lewis O'Brien at left back. Then is that is that a long term fix? I think I think it's going to be for the foreseeable, with the caveat that um, obviously Bangura will come back from from injury. Um, so I think Lucas Engel at the moment is out of the firing line, and I think he'll probably stay there for a little while. I think that you know Carrick will not write him off. Borough will not give up on him at all, and that will be really harsh because. It is very, very early. He's come from overseas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it feels like at the moment he's out of the firing line. Now, Bangura, we asked Carrick about him today. Um, we'll we'll run through all the kind of injury stuff in a minute. But Bangura, the line was he won't play at Bradford, but he should be back before the interna international break. So that 
once he's back in the equation, obviously we haven't seen anything like enough of him really yet to know what level he's at and and is he you know is he now going to be the number one? I thought O'Brien was pretty good at left back to be perfectly honest. I thought that defensively he looked okay, um, but I thought what he did look was very comfortable in possession and wanting to get forward, wanting to get down that left hand side, wanting to try and link up with Riley McGree. And obviously, that was such a massive part of Borough's play last season, what Ryan Giles was doing there, that the balance of the side immediately looked better, I thought, when he was trying to get forward and, and add something down that side. So, um, I mean, again, we asked Michael Carrick about it after the game and he was saying, look, you know, I know that's not really his position. I'm conscious of that. Um, you know, he's been absolutely brilliant. Interestingly, he did say sometimes when you get lone players in, their attitude can be... I don't really want to be out. I don't really want to do that because, you know, I'm only here for a season. I want to show off the best part of myself. Put myself said, in the shop. None of that, that with O'Brien, you know. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Give it, let's go, let's go. And and I thought he played quite well. So I, I think he'll stay there for the next couple of weeks until Bangura is probably back in the mix. And then obviously it'll be interesting to see there'll be more of a decision to make then. And I know Carrick has talked last week at the press conference. He talked about, you know, not harking back to the past and we've got to forget last season and we can't keep making comparisons. But I see Ryan Giles on the bench at Luton. Yeah. And you see how Luton's season started. And I know clearly Borough's season hasn't started as they planned, but you just wonder whether he's looking at it now and thinking, you know, was that was that the right decision? Was it the right decision for an offensive-minded left-back left wing back mm. to go and join a team that are clearly going to spend the vast majority of games in the season defending. Well, Cameron Archer didn't have a fantastic weekend either, did he? <laughs> Although, to be fair, he's going to hold his hand up and think, well, what chance do I stand on my yeah, defence? Exactly, yeah. Like that. To be fair, you're right. But, I mean, you know, yeah, you look at those two players and you that's the risk, isn't it? You know, that's the risk of being, you know, I a really good player in the championship, arguably one of the best players in the division, or going to a Premier League team that is going to struggle. You've got to get that move right, haven't you? Where do you end up? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, listen, it, it's early, but you'd already think there's every chance Luton or Sheffield United could go down. Now, you know, do, do Archer and Giles then become big fish in the championship again for teams who probably have money and will look to go straight back up? Possibly. But... As we've just alluded to there with Southampton, it's not necessarily as easy as that, is it? So, no, it will be interesting to see where where they kind of their their path takes them over the next twelve months or so. Because, yeah, you do wonder what might have been a little bit if they'd been back. But as you say, it's gone now, isn't it? You know, I think I think probably the time is coming to, to start to stop looking back. Although it is difficult not to, knowing what Borough have lost and, and what they're trying to replace them with. Obviously, with O'Brien playing at left back, House and came back in, and 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 when I'm sat listening and, and watching the scores come in on Saturday afternoon, I'd seen Borough got a penalty, and you hear Johnny Housen's taking it. My initial kind of reaction was a little bit surprised, and yet really proper captain's job that isn't it? And, and a moment of need in a massive game like that to step up and take responsibility. And then I was reading that he told him that Grant Ledbetter had said, you know, if we get a penalty, you're taking responsibility. You're on it. Which is yeah. exactly what, what Ledbetter had done. Well, he Which is exactly it. what Grant would have done, yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, didn't he? But yeah, big performance at a big time of need from Borough's captain. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And, and it's kind of house and through and through that he would step up and, and, and take that on, isn't it? You know what I mean? He's, um, he's, he's, he's done that, you know, he's led by example time and time again for Borough. Um, he's at the stage of his career where I think, you know, he, he knows that um, that he's got this leadership role within the squad. An awful lot of young players obviously come through the door. Um, you know, he, he's been around the block enough to know that this has been a difficult month and, and, and you know, it's time for the big personalities to step up. And yeah, absolutely, he did it. He, he rolled the penalty away. Thought he had a good game in general, to be perfectly honest. Um, I mean, again, that first 20 minutes or so, there were pockets of space that Southampton were getting into and you did worry a little bit again about how open Borough were going to be. But um, certainly for the last hour of the game, it's hard to think of a real opening that Southampton had. Um, and, and a lot of that was down to the fact that it just looked a lot more solid, I think, with Housen in there again, yeah. And, and we've talked, haven't we, about the kind of understanding of the front four just hasn't worked. There hasn't been the right balance in the first weeks of the season. And yet it seemed that Josh Coburn and Isaiah Jones really took their chance. Riley McGree 
rose to the occasion and yeah. he has done on on several occasions. Is that is that the closest Burr have looked to a front four click in this season? I think I think at the moment McGree and Jones are the two that I would certainly have nailed on in there. Um I think that they are the best players at the moment in that in that position. Again, force is obviously out. Um, like Bangura, Carrick sent the day on force, won't play at Bradford, should hopefully be back before the international break. So he might come into the equation. But at the moment, I think Jones and um and uh, McGree are, are two that I would definitely have nailed on in the side. Crooks at 10, I think, is still an issue. Um, you know. I did. I still didn't think that worked. I think. I think that it just doesn't look natural there. Slows up the game at times. Um, Rogers is probably the alternative, but at the or moment, Greenwood. You know, or Greenwood, yeah. From what we've seen of Rogers so far, he hasn't necessarily done enough to say really pick me. Greenwood's an interesting one because whereas Carrick has has decided, obviously O'Brien goes straight in. That hasn't been the case with Greenwood. He's had chances to get him in there. I think it'll be interesting to see if he starts tomorrow or not. We'll, we'll get on to that in a minute. But um, but you just feel at the minute that for whatever reason, Carrick's not necessarily jumping at the chance to, to get Greenwood and give him his head. So Crooks is kind of there still by default. And then at the moment, I think it's Coburn above Latter Lath, yeah? Um, you know, and that probably again might be a little bit harsh on Latalat, who who hasn't been playing in a side that's been poor, and has he? But he has missed chances, and I think with Corburn, you know what you're going to get um, in terms of just asking questions of opposition centre halves. I mean, he you know he he won the penalty really because he got onto the wrong side of uh, Harwood Bellas. I think Corbin probably had a little tug at him on the way around, but by the time he'd spun into that position, Howard Bellis is all over him. He goes to ground. It's a penalty all day long. So, um, you know, I think at the moment, yeah, Corbin is is the right choice there. I think Although it says it. You know, the the follow up to that is it says something for Borough that they've had all summer to sign a striker, and they're hanging their hat now on the player who would have been out of the door probably if other things had fallen into place. So that's a whole wider issue that, you know, we've talked about on pods and stuff. But but aside from all of that, yeah, I think at the moment Coburn is the right choice. Without getting into the I talk Aranka, will you play Jordan Rhodes and David Nugent up front argument? Um we we've talked at length about the fact Carrick isn't likely to change his his yeah. general shape. But do you do you look at Coburn and Latte Lath and think they could they could possibly work as a two, even if it's from the bench later on in a game? If yeah, I think I, I, I think that's it. I mean, like you say, I, I can't see a scenario in the in the you know short to medium term where Carrick is going to veer away from the formation that he's been playing and go with two strikers, which inevitably really means a four four two, um, and 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 changing the makeup of the team. I, yeah, I, I don't see that. But yeah, I, th- I think what you could do is toy with it in the latter stages of a game if Borough are chasing something. Because I think I don't see why they couldn't play together. I think they, you know, they're they're different enough and they're kind of complementary enough for each other to be able to do that. But I don't also see it as something that Carrick will have at the forefront of his mind. No, Bradford tomorrow night. Then be- before we get on to. Um, the team news and who's available. Yeah, this is a big chance to get in the last sixteen. Of the, and we know it's not the priority. We know, you know, in all likelihood, Borough aren't going to win this competition. But it's still a big opportunity to get in the last sixteen, and then you're suddenly a favourable draw away from thinking an old on. Yeah, absolutely. And and funnily enough, I was just uh, sorting the, the pages of the paper out an hour ago and just flicking through the fixtures, and I think it's. Uh, You've got me on the hop now, but I think one game is something well, like Newcastle, Newcastle Man City, obviously on Wednesday night. So getting... are in it, Port Vale are in it. Um, you know, there's going to be. I'm I'm just uh, doing this on the hop now, but there's going to be two or three sides get through that you think, goodness me, if Borough could win. So what was I looking at? Port Vale play Sutton, Mansfield play Peterborough, Exeter Luton. Not out the question, Exeter to get through there and let Luton make a load of changes. But you're going to have one of Port Vale or Sutton through. You're going to have one of Mansfield or Peterborough through. You know, if, if Borough can get through and, and then get get one of them. 
And I, and I think the other thing, the other thing is Villa play Everton, Brentford play Arsenal, Chelsea play Brighton. Newcastle, Man City, obviously. Newcastle play Man City. Man United play Crystal Palace. So you're going to have half a dozen. You know, I'm, I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying tear ass down to Coral and stick a fiver on Borough to win the, the Calibre. No, but, but no, there's no. every chance that, you know, you're going to have half a dozen Premier League teams yeah. out. You're going to have a few lower league teams through. Borough might well get a favourable draw. And, and, and if, I think also, given the way the start of the season has gone in the league, it's just important to have something to keep everyone positive and excited about in these next two or three months, isn't it? You know what I mean? Um, it's going to be a longish slog for Borough to get up that table. Um, and if in amongst that you've got, yeah, potentially a home quarter final against Man United or even a home quarter final against a championship team that you think, goodness me, win that you in the You know what I mean? Yeah. That that is a possibility. And Borough, you know, the, the two the two League Cup wins so far over Huddersfield and Bolton have been important to Borough this season because if they hadn't won them, it well, really would have been a miserable start. So um, you know, it, it's kept the momentum going. It's it's given a bit of a feel good factor. There's going to be a big crowd again in terms of Borough fans at Valley Parade tomorrow, a sellout again. So you know, yeah, it's it's a big chance. It is a big chance. And and team news. What are the what are the the news lines there? Team news. So um, this is about not doing your preparation. Do you know if someone's suspended tomorrow? Do you know who? Well, only because I've read it. Ah, there we go. I didn't know it. So I didn't I, know it. If I hadn't read, if I hadn't read before I jumped on here, then I wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. So Matt Crooks is suspended because he was booked in the first two rounds of the competition, um, which I, I, I'd kind of passed me by really because obviously you're, you're in amongst it and there's league games in between and all of this. So, so Crooks is suspended, so he's not playing. Rav Vandenberg came off with about 20 minutes left at the weekend. Um, it looked like a, a force change as opposed to a tactical one. And yeah, Carrick said that's right. It's a muscular thing, um, kind of at the, at the very to top of his leg, bottom of his backside kind of muscle. Um, uh, doesn't sound serious, but is still being assessed. And pretty much Carrick, as good as said, he wouldn't risk him on Tuesday. Um Tommy Smith obviously came off the bench to replace Vandenberg, so could go back in. But again with Smith, Carrick said, look, he's had a very interrupted summer. He's had injury issues. He's, he's kind of come back fit, then he's had another setback. We, we want to be just a little bit careful with him. So that, that made me think, OK, maybe it won't be Smith in from the start then. Um, which leads you to think if it's none of them, it's probably going to be McNair. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the team, he basically said, look, you know, there will be changes. There's a couple of little niggles. There's a couple of things, but, but I don't want it to be wholesale changes. And, and I think he'll avoid ripping everything apart um, on the back of the win because I, I think he'll want to try and get a little bit of rhythm into this side now if he can. So... Will that mean O'Brien continuing at left back ahead of Engel? I suspect it might, yeah. Um, I think Johnny Housen probably drops out because three games in a week would seem probably a bit much for him. So that probably means Barlasa comes in. But apart from that, obviously you need a 10 a, 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 instead of Crooks, which I think will probably be Rodgers. Um, then the rest of the team might well stay the same, I think. And with Corburn up front, you, you've got him down there as your predicted centre forward. I guess the balance there is, yeah. as I always think with a centre forward, you, what you what you want as a centre forward, surely, is a running the team. Look, I'm going to give you five or six games now. You don't take the pressure off a little bit. You don't need to go out there in this game and score to keep your place. And yet, he is only a young lad. Mm -hmm. This is kind of his first prolonged spell in the Borough team. If 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 if. I, as looks to be the case, that that is going to be, that is how the next few weeks are going to turn out. He's going to start at Watford on Saturday, you'd think. So it's that balance, isn't it? Yeah. I guess, tomorrow night. Do, do, you, do you put him in and... and I think that's a bit of a 50-50 call, isn't it? Because you're yeah. right. You don't want to just throw far too much at him. At, at, you know, at, at this stage, and Latilath, and you do want Latilath to get to get it down. Exactly, yeah. You, you, you want to give Latilath every chance to get a bit of momentum going, and and you know, if he get if he's in that side and scores a couple of goals, and that will do him the world of good. But the flip side of that is, Corburn's in now. 
Um, you know, he looked pretty good at the weekend. Um, and, he, and he looked like he was starting to get a bit of an understanding of what the team wants him to do and, and what balls McGree's going to be delivering in for him and what balls Jones is going to be delivering in for him. You know, is there an argument that actually the more you can you can keep that unit together, the better, bearing in mind that, what, two or three weeks down the line, we've got an international break coming. So I think it's a balance. And I, can, I could see both. I, I could see both. I think at the moment, my gut thought would be that he'll stick with Corburn, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was latter lap lining up tomorrow night, put it like that. Was there any other kind of standout moments from the presser this afternoon, or was it all was it all pretty routine after uh, a It was all fairly routine, really. We asked about Matt Clark and whether he would have any chance of, of being um, in the squad tomorrow, and, and Carrick said, no, he's going to play again for the under-23s. Um, he thinks that at the moment that's more beneficial to him and kind of where he's at in terms of his progress. So that's in. I, I, from from that, I would take it that if, if we are going to see Clark back in and around the first team squad, it's probably going to be after the international after the break. break. Yeah, I, th I think that's where we're probably looking at for him. And, and he's obviously a massively forgotten man, isn't he? It's going to be really interesting to see. Um, you know what what he comes back like. Um, and then the, the other the other kind of main talking point was. Obviously, Saturday's starting lineup. Um, there was twelve signings that Borough made in the summer. Three of them were in the team on Saturday. Now, that's a little bit that's a little bit unfair. In that two of the signings were keepers, so clearly they can't both play. Bangura's injured; he might well have played had he been fit. But even so, I thought it was fairly telling that. When push came to shove and Carrick really needed a result and it was going to be a pressurised afternoon that could have turned against Borough, he kind of decided, do you know what? I'm not going to play Silvera. I'm not going to play Latterlath. I'm not going to play Greenwood. Um, you know, the... the Rogers, the, Engel. Rogers, Rogers, yeah, Engel, yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, now, we put that to him and... As, as you would kind of expect, he was saying, no, that, look, that's not the case. It wasn't a really conscious decision. You know, yes, um, it's going to take lads time to settle. Some will settle faster than others, whatever. It wasn't a case of get them all out of the team. I, I need players I know I can really trust and rely on. Okay, but I still think there was a little element of that. I mean, again, Carrick was saying, look, you know, it's unfair to really talk about the new signings like that because I played at Man United for 15 years, whatever it was, and I had dips in form. I had months where I wasn't anywhere near my best, and occasionally I got I got taken out of the side. Well, I wasn't a new sign, and I hadn't changed my surroundings. You just have a dip in form, and so I get that. I do see that, um, but I still think it, it was fairly telling at the weekend that he kind of went back to the tried and trusted. Yeah, and and. Don't you? Yeah, I do. And and managers talk, you know, I look at Gareth Southgate with England and, and he put picking players like Maguire, Sterling when he was out of club form, Calvin Phillips, even though he hasn't kicked the ball yeah. for City for ages. And the word it always comes back to is trust, isn't it? He knows yeah. that he can trust those players. It doesn't matter what's happening in the club, whether they're not yeah. playing, whether they're not part of those plans. He knows he can trust them. And the other thing, from one extreme of the management spectrum to the other, really. Neil Warnock, when he was in charge of Borough, how he always used to talk, didn't he, about he likes players who he knows go out there and it'll be a seven out of ten. You yeah. know, not there might be a four one week and a nine the next. He wants seven yeah. out of tens, which is again effectively saying he wants players who he knows he can hang his hat on the new and who he can trust. And I think even more so when when you're in it and environment when it chips down, exactly. you need win. Yeah, where you where, where you say where where the chips are down, where where you need to win. So, I, yeah, I agree. I thought that was telling as well. And I think what will be interesting is how that plays out in the next few weeks and months. Yeah. Because we saw last year, didn't we, that when, which which has made Carrick's kind of tinkering all the more telling, I think, in the early weeks of the season, is that we saw last year that Carrick isn't a manager who will make changes for the sake of it. Last year when Borough were winning, he was keeping the same team. Same team um, every week, yeah. yeah. And you would suspect that he'll do the same same this year it's that balance with players like Engel and and Latter Lath and Rogers and even Greenwood although I know it's slightly different with him in, in that he's a lone player and you 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 want him to get the experience you want him to adapt but then if they're not performing 
And I don't think that's the case for Ladilath. I think he's done all right, be it, be it missed chances. But Engel's clearly struggled. Rodgers, you've seen flashes, but he hasn't done anything anywhere near enough to show that he should be playing regularly. Silvera, again, just looked like more of an impact sub. It's that balance, isn't it, where you want them to adapt, but then if you're not winning and they're not performing, yeah. you can't keep playing them just to get them used to championship football. No, that's that's exactly it. And, and and that's where it's so difficult that you've got such a big group with them. If it was one player, then it's much easier to dip him in, dip him out, you know, bring him on for his sub appearances when the side's playing that little bit better, maybe give him a start. But you know, the, the issue at the moment, like you say, is there's a there's a group of five or six there that you know it it's going to be pretty apparent over the course of the season if they're not really featuring in the first team very much. That's going to be a narrative and it's clearly going to be something that will be brought up ahead of January to say, look, you know, what do we make of this summer recruitment? Has has it been good enough or hasn't it? Now, at the moment, um, you know, Carrick's still not wanting to go anywhere near that for a number of different reasons. Um, and I think it's hard to it's hard to really force it because it is still very early for these lads. And, you know, some of them we've seen a bit, some of them we've barely seen at all. So come January, though, they'll have had, you know, they'll have had five months, won't they? And if they're not playing fairly regularly in the first team, then clearly there will be questions to be asked there. I think one thing, um, just before we wrap up, it's worth talking about is, in Isaiah Jones, you've got a player there who... We've seen when he's on song, when he's at his best, he's one of the most devastating wide attacking players in the championship. Now we know clearly last year he was he was going through all sorts of issues off the pitch, which which understandably had a massive impact on his performances. We talked to him after the game at Sheffield Wednesday last week, and he was he was saying, and and we'll we'll have the full quotes to come in the next week or so. But he was saying, you know, he's happy now. He's he's got through that testing period. He feels good in himself. If Burra can get him something like he was a couple of years ago you know we've seen we've seen him agree that you know we, we've talked about this McGree's a top six championship player isn't he, he easy he, even with those players who, who who have struggled those who've come in so far if you can get the likes of Jones and Force and McGree hitting on something like then then you've you, you've got players who will worry and yeah. terrify championship defences. I, I get that as a unit, as an attacking unit, Burrick clearly still haven't completely clicked, but they still have the individual attacking players to worry teams. And there's been there have been positive signs of it with Jones. It's been yeah. it's been a bit of a slow burn, admittedly. Especially but, from the bench. I think the next challenge yeah, is becoming a consistent starter, is isn't to, it? Is to really do it for the full 90 minutes. Um but but I was definitely buoyed by by what I saw at the weekend with it, um, from both him, as I say, from both him and McGree, um, I thought there were positive signs there. Um, and, and both of them were kind of getting back to, you know, what, what you would want from them if they were somewhere near to their best. And yeah, you're right. You know, you look through this Borough squad and at the moment, who would you say are the players that you would have down as you know, top four, five, six championship players, potentially Premier League players. Well, at the moment, I think McGree, Jones and probably Hayden Hackney would be your three, wouldn't they? Maybe yeah. Dieng, the keeper. Um, don't think we've seen enough of it from any of the defenders so far this season. Housen's, you know, different because of his age. And and obviously, you know, Coburn, Latalath up front. Well, let's see where they develop. But at the moment... The three that you would say fall into that category are Jones, McGree, and Hackney, and and you know they're clearly going to be massively important to what happens with Borough over the next couple of months. Before we wrap up, then Valley Parade, any memorable visits in the past? Well, I was there this summer. Doesn't seem yeah. like very long ago. <laughs> that was that probably wasn't a memorable. It wasn't moment. memorable particularly. No, <laughs> it really wasn't. Um, no, I was there this summer, obviously for the friendly, um, and we raised that with with Carrick, and I mean. You know, as you'd expect, friendly is a friendly, isn't it? Doesn't really bear any bearing. You know, he he was saying that I've, I've been, you know, doing my kind of research with Bradford, and they've changed formation about three times since we played them. So, um, but I think I think one thing what, what I would say was that day, Andy Cook pretty yeah. much bullied a very young Borough makeshift defence, um, and 
that would be my takeaway from that game for, you know, yes, there's an awful lot that you can't read into it, but Andy Cook is a proper, in inverted commas, League Two striker. He was top scorer in the league last season. He's big, he's muscular, he's physical, he puts himself about. He's, you know, Borough are going to have to handle that. Now, Fry and Lenehan, assuming they're the centre-halves, that's very, very different to the makeshift um, defence that Borough had when they went down there in pre-season. You know what I mean? And and Fry and Lenehan will not be unsettled at all at the prospect of taking on a physical League 2 striker. But that's still the way Bradford are going to play. An awful lot of what they do goes through Cook. Um, and... That you know that will be a challenge. Borough will have to stand up to the physical test, certainly in the early stages of the game, because that was my takeaway from the pre-season game. That um, there was parts of that game that looked like a League Two side against a bunch of kids. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was going to say you'd well imagine that Lenahan would be licking his lips at the prospect of a of, a, of an outing like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. In a game like that, because because you say there he, he is a proper centre forward, but you 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 slot Lenahan in the proper centre half category as well, wouldn't you? So that'll be a fierce yeah. one on the watch. That'll, that, that'll be a, yeah, that'll be a proper a proper head to head, won't it? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously Mark Hughes, uh, a few former Lord, Borough players, Richie Smallwood's there, yeah. Yeah, loads of Borough fans going down. Um, you know, I, I always think it's a pretty good stadium to go and watch football at Valley Parade. You know, obviously at that level, it's pretty much the biggest stadium. Well, I think it is the biggest stadium in League Two, isn't it? it must be. Um, and and you know, it, it, it'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be a good cup game. It'll be a decent night. I see absolutely no reason why Borough can't come away from it. Looking forward to the draw and then the next round. I think they'll win. Let's hope so. Well, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for listening. As I said at the top, um, if you watch on YouTube, then then subscribe and 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 do leave a comment like Plenty did at the end of last week because we do appreciate that. If you listen on podcasts, then rate and review. We'll be back at the end of this week, hopefully reflecting on a win, a favourable fourth round draw, and we'll be looking ahead to the trip to Watford this weekend. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day.